On the heels of the Xbox Showcase, we take a look at the controversial reaction to the show, how we foreseen and tried to warn gamers of this very moment, and gamers' overall best foot forward. Let's talk about it. How the Xbox Showcase disappointed and exposed Phil's true plan. Is this just RIP, negative Xbox talk, or is there more to it? Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with a very special video. Um, a video that's just very self-reflecting in nature. But before we get into all that, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason. And y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, guys. What you see on your screen right now is Halo Infinite, and I am showing it, I mean, this video is in 1080p, but I am showing the 4K version, and the 4K version is a lot more sharp. It makes the gameplay pop a lot more with all that said, and, and so they were true about that. It looks better, but was better good enough? We'll get into all that. But with that said, um, we know the story by now, we should know, and for those of you that don't know, Xbox had its showcase, um, its big showcase, where they said we're going to be talking games, 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 and this is the showcase that Phil Spencer told you guys that he was happy to present after looking at Sony's showcase, and see, the problem with that is the expectation off those words, and I truly hope Xbox people are listening, or maybe they are and they just don't care, we'll talk about all that, but the expectations off those words were simply this. Oh, you're happy with what you show, what was PlayStation shown, because what you are going to show is going to be so much better, and more importantly, better to the point to where people will stop putting such a spotlight on Sony and will put a spotlight on Microsoft because it's going to purely and, and, and so much look like that you guys are ahead of the game. That's what those, when, when people heard those words, that's what those words resonated to the person that was listening to it, the person that was in the know, the person that knows that the mind share with PlayStation is so, so humongous that Xbox has to do, they got to do more than above and beyond to take away some of that spotlight. They can't just go blow for blow and, you know, they're so behind in points that they really got to knock it out of the box. That's how everybody took that. And that's not what everybody got. Some people were happy with it. I get that. Those are some of the most staunchest Xbox fans. And if that's what they want to do, fine. They're, they're, hey, they're adults. They're allowed to do whatever they want to do, fine. But again, your own personal litmus that you hold, you cannot expect the rest of the gamers to hold because they're putting money on the wood. They don't feel this emotional tie to a box or to an ecosystem like you do. They are reasonable expectations that they have and they're putting money on the wood. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, here's the thing, y'all. People, and I've always had this debate, and this is why I've always said that the whole sports approach when it comes to What's your favorite platform is a silly approach to have. I'm guilty of it. I'm not trying to say that I'm, 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 a, I'm a cut above it all. I've mistakenly made sports analogies, and I, I'm going to try to just stay away from that because you get what you got yesterday when people set the bar too low, and I think making sports analogies is helping to set that bar too low. Now, here's the thing. People make sports analogies and say, hey, you should rock with PlayStation or with Xbox, you know, you got to show a level of dedication even when they're doing bad. And I don't agree with that. Here's why. Sport with a sports team, you're a fan. But with a game or a company, you're a consumer. All right? You stick with the sports team through thick and thin because the incoming revenue helps out your city. They're supposed to signify your city your locale and through thick or thin they're going to benefit you you know what i'm saying give you the sports world all that other stuff so that's why you're a fan and it's okay to be a fan of a sports team but you should never first and foremost be a fan of a company 
because you should primarily stick with the service provider because they are providing quality product not because they're promising to give you quality product but they're providing it to you now and when we as consumers when we blur those lines we're destroying gaming at its core and at its core it's a emergence of improving technology and engaging interactivity for a community to enjoy when we sit there and take this sports approach we instead bolster the antithesis of that which is the creation of cult factions that supports logos and brands no matter what they're doing whether we engage in them or not Cause you got a lot of people out here that love PlayStation, that love Xbox, and they don't even play the damn games. They're capping for experiences that they don't even play. I'm not capping for an experience that I don't even touch unless I can say, hey, look, I'll give that game its credit, not my cup of tea, but it's helped bolstering my platform or choice, and they, and they are doing what I want them to do and creating the type of games that I know that I'm going to play, and I can show proof of that. So capping for Sea of Thieves, for example, and them, there being Ubers and Ubers of people playing it on PC, because let's be honest, I could pull up the chart right now, but I'm not gonna throw salt in the wounds. It's at the bottom of the list right now for most played on consoles at the time of this recording. Most of Sea of Thieves hype is for PC. So most of you console gamers that are hyping that up, I can, you can't hype that up unless it's coming to fruition that titles that you like, that you yearn for, are, are coming out of this ordeal. If not, there's nothing to hype for you. That's just cult mentality, all right? And as far as I'm concerned, my faith is not blind. I detail explicitly why I like or dislike something. For full disclosure, I set my litmus out for everybody to see and for full transparency. And I do not waffle. People may hear that and may say, you waffle. Before you were an Xbox guy, now you're not an Xbox guy. No. Premier over being an Xbox guy, I was a hardcore gaming guy. And when Xbox made it air apparent that they didn't want to dwell into hardcore gaming the way that I appreciated, I stepped away. So therefore my litmus stayed intact. I am not a fan of no gaming system. I may be an enthusiast because that platform is providing me the games that I want, period. And that's the way that it should be. Now, beyond that whole grandiose speech that I just gave, I want to show you Let's review the history of this channel and how we tried to warn you of all this disappointment that you guys ran into the day prior to, uh, of this recording. All right. First and foremost, when I came on the scene, it's been, it's, all, it's been almost three years, guys and gals. September 20th, 2017 is when I first hit the scene. Here goes my very first video, y'all. Phil Sp and I was a full-fledged Xbox guy. Y'all know it. I got into it. Got into a little, you know, it was friendly tiff, you know, words with my homie Porter Rock. You know what I'm saying? That's what helped spawn my relationship with the homie Dirk Brigadi, because Dirk kind of, you know, he antagonized that that battle between us on Twitter. And then, you know, the rest is history. I met up with the homie Dirk Brigadi, and the rest is history. And you guys are enjoying We Bleed Green because from our working together on PNTS Network, Dirt now has We Bleed Green, a very successful Xbox show and one that you guys can go to for serious Xbox content. You know what I'm saying? So there's a deep history here, three, three year history where I was an Xbox guy, okay? But here's the thing, from the very beginning, I never wholeheartedly felt positive about the words coming out of Phil Spencer mouth. He never charmed me. Why did he never charm me? Because I work in the Fortune 500 world. I understand business babble and I know when I'm being bullished. You know what I'm saying? Because I dealt with it every day. Now, maybe some of you guys didn't recognize it, but I recognized it and I tried to warn you of so. So even in September 20th, 2017, when Phil Spencer was hitting the division I was solely capping for, 
I said Phil Spencer gets a new promotion and I'm not celebrating because I put my litmus in hardcore gaming and you competing to bring me the best product or service in that realm. And he didn't do that. Or his words didn't convey that. Also after that, I came up with another video. Um, a a close to a year later, Xbox fanboy. I love the Xbox brand, but I hate what Phil Spencer is doing to it. I was still wholeheartedly fighting that good fight for Xbox, but the words coming out of Phil Spencer's mouth, again, was the antithesis, the opposite of what I was in Xbox gaming for, what I came to Xbox gaming for in 2001, 2002, okay? So I tried to warn you guys of that, of, of Phil's doublespeak. That started in 2017, spilled over in 2018. What also happened in 2018 is I tried to warn you guys of the consistent olive branch towards Sony that again goes against the still sharp and still approach that fans like myself desire. I didn't like, I, I'm like Michael Jordan on this one. When Michael Jordan was talking about LeBron and why he's not just gonna sit there and just praise and kiss LeBron's feet like everybody else. Le Michael Jordan said, I wasn't trying to play with Charles Barkley and Magic Johnson, making reference to LeBron trying to build all these super teams to build a, uh, to win a championship. He said, I wasn't trying to build a super team to win a championship. He said, I was trying to beat Charles uh, Barkley and, and Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. And, and that was evident in the Last Dance documentary. And that's how I felt about hardcore gaming. The more that you looked your opponent in the eye, and you did a dig in a dignified way, competed with them against software to try to provide better software for your consumer base, the better it made gaming overall. The 360 PlayStation 3 generation, to me, with those guys running neck and neck, was a lot better generation than this one. Because Sony really didn't have any competition. And by the time Nintendo came in with their thing, well, Nintendo's just trying to speak to another brass other than hardcore gaming, but by the time Nintendo came in there, Sony had, Sony had already wiped down the crown, covered it in plastic, and went to bed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They was already done. And just to show y'all that they still on top of this generation, they said, hey, y'all still doubting us, and they, they tossed out Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. You know what I'm saying? It was a wrap. And it wasn't one of the better generations because of that, right? So I, I talked about that, that, you know, the still sharp and still, that talk was of Peter Moore, Seamus Blackley, and all of that. It, it seemed to be the, the, the um, it seemed to be fading away, and that wasn't a good thing. I warned y'all, it wasn't a good thing. All right. So the next thing that I tried to tell you guys about too was that um, in regards to that, here goes another video: how Phil Spencer's copy shop approach hurts the Xbox brand. I told y'all about that when he came up there. Um, at, at Dice, you know what I mean? On the Dice stage, it said what he said, and I had to go to Puerto Rock and say the battle's over. I waved the white flag. I am not gonna fight wholeheartedly for a guy that's not trying to fight for himself. I'm trying to argue with y'all and create videos every day telling you how the Xbox brand is better than PlayStation. Hold your head up, Xbox Warriors. Fight, 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 because Xbox is gonna fight, and the leader ain't fighting. So I went, I said, no. Nah. I'm done with that. Again, I didn't waffle. I stick to my litmus. And my litmus as a consumer is bigger than me praising a brand. I got more dignity than that to sit there and praise a brand that ain't giving me something that I enjoy. All right? So I talked about that. The co coffee shop feel. We, we coined that moniker here. Coffee shop feel. Then I even sat down with Bloody Knuckles with Cyrus Burke of GRG. You know, I was in my heavy Xbox capping days back then. We sat together, we they tried to talk your boy off the ledge, but we had a real good discussion. So again, I'm telling you, there's levels to this. The next, in 2018, 2019, I was, I had, we had warned you guys per this channel, he was not trying to go blow for blow over quality. That he may talk to talk, but he wasn't walking to walk. What he was saying was a lie. Just of one of the videos that I said speaking to that, Phil Spencer admits he does not want to compete with other platforms over quality. We we talked about that in 2019, right? In a subsequent video, 
Well, a prior video we talked about in 2018, actually, Sony in the end to save Xbox consoles. We talked about this in 2018 where there was evidence that came out that Xbox was approaching other platforms to try to put their, their, their stuff on there, their games on there. And then now we found out it was Game Pass that Phil was told to kick rocks when he tried to approach them about Game Pass. But then y'all said, no, 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 back then. And then we come to find out now it was true per recent sit downs and interviews, all right? And then we also talked about Phil's mind blowing take on business gaming. That sit down that he did with, with uh, what's those people? What I think the For Fortune Magazine people, I think it was. It was crazy. It was crazy. Then we also told you about how to keep Phil and Satya honest about AAA content as it relates to them duping their supporters by keeping them in a perpetual state of weight. Now, for those that just want quantity over quality, you're, you're good. And I get that. And there should be no reason for you to leave. I get I told I wholeheartedly understand that. But for those that were sticking around, expecting the quality to go up back to the way it was in previous generations, you were being duped. We tried to tell you that. We even created a whole platform, the Hard Knock Digital Culture, and we created a podcast. The NRO podcast was based upon that whole issue. And as we were filming it on Twitch, we were bringing it over to, on YouTube after our, 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 our time had allotted there, you were able to see here on this platform the various ways that we broke that down. And lastly, in 2020, even right before the showcase, Phil Spencer makes eye-opening statement right before the July showcase about what I said earlier, about him trying to bring Xbox product and services to other platforms. When y'all were laughing at me, when? What was y'all laughing at me about that? Was that 28? Yeah, Sony in the end to save the Xbox console because they said no, that's why I said that. Look at that. Look at all that, y'all. So I'm telling you, the channel has a deep history of us trying to warn you. Now, what have I done in response? I never settled on Phil. Therefore, I spoke out and I had to leave. Y'all know I went to Stadia. And the reason why I like Stadia is because Stadia gives me a way to play games in a way that I never thought I would be playing them with the ease of, of uh, and convenience. The performance is fantastic. It's even better than consoles because I'm getting 60 frames per second on the overwhelming majority of games. The portability is great, all that stuff. They just need the games. So I know that I'm giving, you know, decisions have consequences. I'm sacrificing instant access to all games for all the, the other, the, all the other feature sets and the ability to play that I'm getting with Stadia. I'm starting from scratch. But Xbox has been so bad. And their direction is one that I do not want to be a part of so much that that's where I'm going. And y'all know that even though I praise PlayStation as far as their business sense, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of their games. We'll see how things go this generation. I might change. But you know what I'm saying? I'm happy with Stadia. With that being said, I'm not a fool. I understand. I realize I'm starting from fresh again, and I understand that Stadia at its core right now at this moment is not for the average gamer. That's fine. But again, my litmus is towards hardcore, hardcore gaming. I get my hardcore gaming satisfied here. We got Doom here. We got Division 2 here. The mobility is great. We got a lot more games here. You know what I'm saying? And we got a lot more coming. I got Boulder's Gate coming. A lot of games are coming. And then the platform had so many hardcore games at launch that people had to say, hey, what's the family friendly stuff? What's going on here? And they had to say, oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. We forgot about that. So I like that mind state. I love the hardcore mentality of the platform, okay? But I get it. People, there was, a, there was an instance where Digital Foundry made a mistake and they had said some erroneous things about the performance of Stadia. And when they said those erroneous things, I had hit the internet and said, nah, y'all needed to check this and turn off HD and all this other stuff. And people were laughing at that and said, MM2K, you're capping. And I wasn't mad at them. I get where they were coming from. 
Now, behind the scenes, some of the tech experts, I had to let, la we, we still laugh at them in the state of community because they don't even, their Captain Frex child don't even know how the cloud gaming works. But with that being said, my issue was with the tech people, the people behind the scenes that didn't understand why I was saying what I was saying and Digital Foundry for not doing it. With that being said, for the general population, I get it. They looked at all that and they said, hold on. If I got to do all that to not have issues with Stadia, I don't want to get into it. And I get that. And this is what I'm urging my Xbox people to get. Understand that if you gotta sit there and wait till E3, Comic Con, it Con Air, the Tokyo Game Show, the Belgium Waffle Fest, if you gotta wait till all this to finally get what you want, it's not worth it to the average gamer. So you can't be mad at the average gamer when they say, yo, this is not it, puppy. This is not it. You can't be mad at them. It's Xbox's job to bring in more people because I'm telling you, with all the money that they're spending in Game Pass, with all the initiatives that they're trying to do, with all the competition they got to buck up against, they're not going to prepare with just y'all. They got to bring in more people. So you got to make sure, you got to be honest for the viability of your platform, that they're doing more than what they're doing. And they're simply not doing that just with, with the showcase. Halo made it, needed to be shown in a stellar fashion. And y'all knew that. Because when I told y'all, as long as Halo is shown in a very good light, y'all said, no, I'm not down in my expectations. This, this showcase got to be the bomb. And then when it came out that it's not the bomb, now y'all went back to capping. Y'all went to camp capping a lot. Stop it. So hopefully you have all learned that right now you got to hold their feet to the fire. You got to recognize that again, Xbox played on your desires to no longer be laughed at, to be considered a top dog, not to be in last place. So they kept promising you that they will get there first with the X and then with the, with the software and stuff. Oh yeah, see if things is going to be all this. And then when y'all get it, y'all just keep capping for it. Now with the Series X, y'all doing it all over again. Then you got to be able to foresee. You got to say, okay, they're not doing the things that we want them to do. They're not being transparent about it. What is their actual strategy? The strategy is about saturation and money making with minimum effort, not quality out of the gate like they've been lying to you and telling you. And lastly, you gotta have a call to action. If you haven't inadvertently, before, okay, before maybe you, you fell for it and, and, and didn't step in on time, but now you got a chance to really do something and make some help, um, um, make some change proactively, okay? Stop just selling for everything and stop worrying about the ponies across the street. Worry about your platform, your own platform, and 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 be critical of it accurately, all right? You can say, okay, they fooled me. They got me believing that they was going to hop on this whole quality tip and they're not doing it, but they got to do it now, okay? Dude, you know, have a call to action to yourself. Now, if you appreciate the budget gaming approach, cheer it on. But if you want better, again, speak up now. Especially if you refuse to take it anymore. And then after speaking up, if nothing happens, then you might have to do what MM2K do, did. You ain't got to necessarily go to uh, Stadia, but there's going to be a lot of platforms out here. You're going to have to be bold and just leave. Because that's what I had to do again. And I'm telling you, I was afraid, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I'm, I'm just being sincere here, I was afraid to do so. When things started becoming prevalent to me that this was the step that they were going to take, I was afraid to do so. But when I did it, first I did it with PC and it backfired. I did, I'm really, I can't be a full-fledged PC gamer, there's just too much maintenance with that. But then Stadia came, and now I'm happy. And again, you'll find your happy spot too, but don't be afraid, man, step out of that box. Make Xbox do better. Tell, make them, don't let them, look, as long as they know that you're going to stare around no matter what they do, then they have no incentive to do better, especially with, with minimum effort. In a year was Sony threw everything out but the kitchen sink and Sony made 16 billion. If Microsoft can still make 10 billion, they have no incentive to do better unless you give them an incentive, period.
And that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I have to say in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I have to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadium Dosage. But that said, I appreciate all of y'all. It's not hate y'all, man. It's just, it's just time. It's time to call. It's, it's time to have a call for action, man. Straight up. But with that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.